What is up, everyone? As always, I'm your friend, the neighborhood Wraith, and we are back with some more Spooktober! And today we are playing uh, It Moves. Bedtime. Bedtime is supposed to be a happy event for a tired child. For me, it was terrifying. While some children might complain about being put to bed, before they had finished watching a film or playing their favorite video game. When I was a child, nighttime was something to truly fear. Somewhere in the back of my mind, it still is. This is me. Hello, me. Ah, it's a bunk bed. I sleep on the top. It's a wolf. My mom, I guess, up there? He told me, yeah, this is my brother's room. He told me yesterday he thought it was the room that we both had shared until then. Um. Ah! This is my father. Oh. I can't remember exactly when it started, but that my apprehensions for his falling asleep seemed to be to correspond with me being moved into a room of my own. Well. Hey, I'm Mom. This is my mother. Uh. Man with mustache. Mom told me not to touch her stuff, especially this stuff. I've been too immersed in it. I think mom said this is just a bunch of clothes in here. Okay. Box is full of stuff. Okay, so I go. Oh, I was eight years old at the time, and until then I had shared a room quite happily with my older brother. And this is perfectly understandable for a boy five years my senior. My brother eventually wished for a room of his own, and as a result, I was given a room at the back of the house. As my brother was given a new bed, I was given a bunk bed, which we used to share. While I was as upset about sleeping on my own, I was excited at the thought of being able to sleep in the top bunk, which seemed far more adventurous to me. Dude, why did mom's name just maybe like the way that it was spelled out in the font maybe seemed like she was possessed or something? Already? Yes. Adults need their sleep, you see. You'll be sleeping alone for the first time. You excited? Yes, mom. Okay. Oh. Alright, turning off the lights and good night. Good night. Oh, man. Chapter one, cave. Okay. Oh, what? All right. Uh, what the? Uh, 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 a 
Okay. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, hi. <laughs> okay. What in the hell? What are you up there? Uh, small water hole. The water is dirty. Probably not going to drink it. Okay. Sorry for coughing directly into the mic here, guys. Holy douche. Oh, what is this? God, it's right at clock. That's not what I meant to click on. What? Is that a skull? Uh. Oh, okay, yeah, that is. That is a skull. Alright. Uh, I wonder what's cooking. Uh, that must be it in here. Um, okay. Uh, what in the hell? Oh. Okay. There's gotta be something else in here. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, ah, 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 is that moving? It is moving. Uh, stalking is such a strong word. I, I prefer to think of it as more as intense research. I'm the one individual. By the way, you're missing the stalkers under your bed with me? What? Just kidding. Um, hmm. Alright, that's cute. And, uh. Well, cold, unwelcoming breeze comes from the bottom of the stairs. Time to go down. Uh, it looks like we're in a cave. Weird mushroom looks poisonous. I don't like this. What was that? Huh. Oh. I don't like the sound of that. Stop. Hello. Ah. Huh? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, I... I don't like the... Standing on the floor? Oh, that's cute. What the fuck? Damn it, dude. Such a pansy! Uh. Hello? <laughs> I don't like the screaming in the cave. The screaming in the cave is not okay. Why? That was not okay. That, that wasn't a good time. Is this a dream? I'm dreaming of this cave? It's gotta be. What are you? 
Stop it! I am the dumb white person that will go explore. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's not okay. Uh. uh oh, jeez! What the fuck? Oh my god, what are you? What's up with all the weird horror games with the weird walking heads? <laughs> Mother, I had a bad dream. Oh. Full of toys and stuff. Toys from the movie. Anything changed? No. <laughs> Mom put the flowers there. Uh, no need to go here right now. Should we go outside right now? I shouldn't go outside. Picture of a man standing around. I think it's dad when he was younger. <laughs> Wake the fuck up! Wake the fuck up! Mom, I had a bad dream. Oh, sweetie, what's wrong? I had a bad dream. Oh, that's too bad, sweetie. I'll be up in a minute. We can eat breakfast together. All right, hurry up. All right. Um, yeah, that was more more than just a bad dream. Dad. Dad. Dad, wakey, wakey. Eggs and bacon. Oh. It's locked. Stupid bro. Well, I gotta change my clothes. Clothes changed, and so another day started. It was a day of little importance to our story. I won't bother with the details. One thing I remember is that even though I played with friends like I always did, I somehow still felt lonely. I didn't even remember it until later that night. It was, it was time to go to sleep again. Uh, well, there's an arrow pointing, I guess. Here we go. I guess it's time for another nightmare. Oh, labyrinth. Uh, oh, oh, cool, 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 Haha, <laughs> uh, cool. Ah, there is a smiley face. I'm being recorded? Oh, that's cute. Oh, that just sounds lovely. Okay. I'm a bit. Oh. Ah, so that's the first one. Ah, so no. First. Second. A wild guess. Oh! Oh, duh, because there's a funny face and a smiley face, and that's what we have to match. Okay, okay. I see you, game. I see you. That looks like... 
crowd open as well. So this can go down. Ah, okay, so that connects with this. <laughs> no, uh, uh, wait a minute. Looks like something's like showing up in the middle of the screen. Oh, is that a fucking face? Oh, just stop. That's not okay. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this too. Ah, oh, mm, mm, that's not fucking cool. The face is in the screen. Closer to concert, it looks old. Oh my god! Hey. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Stop it. Stop. Is that this? Mm. Oh, what are you? Nothing of interest, I think. Uh. 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 Fuck this. This is done. That's an old broken poster. Um, no. Okay. This is dumb. So fuck it down. The face just reminds me of the red face. Oh, fuck. From Insidious. Maybe there's stuff here. No, okay. Um, uh, stop it. Not cool. On um, how to use a fire extinguisher. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. Um, I don't want to learn how to use fire extinguisher. I want to get out. on my way back here, didn't I? Yes, I did. I don't even know what I'm looking for right now. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So there's ventilation right there. What the hell am I even 
Sounds most freaking day. Some sort of machine. Isn't that lovely? Come on. I don't even know where the hell I'm even supposed to go. Like, I just I just don't get it. I'm sorry, guys. I just realized that I haven't really been talking that much. And I've just been... I don't know where the fuck I'm supposed to go. Also, I keep disassociating and looking at the fucking demon fucking face that is right in the middle of my screen. And I don't know where I'm going to go. This is stupid. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, when I awaken from a deep sleep, to something moving or stirring, we should say. It can take a few moments for you to truly understand what is happening. Fog of sleep hangs over your eyes and ears, even when lucid. Something was moving. There was no doubt about that. At first, I wasn't sure what it was. Everything was dark, almost pitch black, but there was enough light creeping in from outside to, un to outline the room. Two thoughts appeared in my mind almost simultaneously. The first was that my parents were in bed because the rest of the house lay both in darkness and silence. The second thought turned to a noise, a noise which had obviously awoken me. That was it. Two bed sheets rustling in the dark, and someone breathing, as if someone just some disturbed sleeper was attempting to get all comfortable in the bottom bunk. I lay there in disbelief, thinking that the noise was the, either my imagination or perhaps just my pet cat finding somewhere comfortable to spend the night. It was then that I noticed my door shut as it had been, as I'd fallen asleep. Perhaps my mom had checked in on me. The cat had sneaked into the room. Yes, that must be it. I turned to face the wall, closing my eyes in sleep, in vain hope that I could fall back to sleep. As I moved, the rustling noise from underneath me ceased. I thought that I must have disturbed my cat, but quickly I realized that the visitor in the bottom bug was much less mundane than my pet trying to sleep, and much more sinister. As if a bird had been disgruntled, and disgruntled by my present and disturbed sleep, it began to toss and turn violently, like a child having a tantrum in their bed. I could hear the sheets twist and turn with increasing ferocity. Fear then gripped me, not like a subtle sense of unease I had experienced earlier, but now potent, terrifying. 
My heart races, my eyes panic, scanning the almost impenetrable darkness. I let out a cry. As most young boys do, I instinctively shattered on my mother. I could hear something stir on the other side of the house as I began to breathe a sigh of relief that my parents were coming to save me. The bunk bed suddenly started to shake violently as if grand as if gripped by an earthquake scraping against the wall. I can hear the sheets below me thrashing around me as if tormented by malice. I did not want to jump down to safety as I feared the thing at the bottom bunk would reach and grab me. Pulling me into the darkness as I stayed there, white knuckles clutching my own blanket like a shroud of protection. But the wait seemed like an eternity. What's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? I cried out my mother consoled me. Tears of fear followed by relief streamed down my face. Yet through all the horror and, horror and relief, I did not tell her why I was so upset. I cannot explain it, but it was as though whatever had been in that bunk would return, even if if I, I even as much spoke of it. Whether that was the truth, I do not know, but as a child, I felt as if that unseen menace remained close, listening. My mother lay in the empty bunk, promising to stay there until morning. I remember the next day we wanted to go anywhere, be anywhere, but in that suffocating room. It was a Saturday and I played outside quite happily with my friends. Although our house was not large, we were lucky to have a long sloping garden in the back. We played there often as much of it was overgrown and we could hide in the bushes, climbing the huge sycamore tree which towered above all else, and easily imagined ourselves even in the throes of a grand adventure. As fun as it all was, occasionally my eye would turn to the small window in my room, ordinary, slight, innocuous. But for me, that thin boundary was looking was a looking glass into a strange cold pocket of dread. Outside, the lush green surroundings of our garden filled with smiling faces from my friends. Inside, the feeling of, of something in that room watching me play, waiting for the night when I would be alone, eagerly filled with hate. It may sound strange to you, but by the time my parents ushered me back in that room for the night, I said nothing. I didn't protest and even make an excuse as to why I couldn't sleep there. I still felt that this thing would be enraged if I... As if I so much as spoke of it. Another night came. Oh, factorized. Oh, that's cute. So I guess we're in some sort of factory. Oh! You know... You love to see it. You love it. Look at that. Uh, I love what you did with the place. Been around a lot of pool. It's too old and torn to make up the details. It's a huge school. Been around the wall. Sure. Uh, uh, this is the same room. There's nothing else for me to click on. I'm literally clicking on everything in the house in here. All right. You know what? Well, wait a minute. Ah, ah, yeah, that's different. Okay, the eyes are flashing. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep walking. Obviously that's causing it to blink faster. Uh, no, can't really do anything else.
What the hell happened? Um, all right. Cool, cool. Oh, some, some kind of altar, I see. Large circulating fan. Um, okay. Something is pouring out of those. Green landscape pictures and okay, cool, that's cool. That Obviously important. The landscape. So, ooh, what is this? What is this? No. Okay, I thought that was something important that I could have like moved. Okay, so there's obviously something I can do with those doors. What I can do, I do not know. Hmm. What can I do with these freaking doors? Uh, oh, oh, the lights up. Okay, the, at the airports. The runway lights. Something can pull out of those. Well, can't go that way. Some kind of machinery. Uh, uh, what is that? Hello. Oh, oh, it says hello. Oh, that's nice. Hi. Um, you know, can we not? I think that sounds awesome. It's uh, it's not. Uh, all right. Yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Ah, cool, 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 I love you, mm -hmm. you're awesome, you're the best, where are we going, friend, hmm? where did we go, oh, okay, so uh, we need to go this way, Can't do anything with that yet. No, oh, no, no. Not that special yet. Um. I'm a bit lost. I'm gonna tell you, friends. I really uh don't know where to go. But we're just gonna keep moving on up. Nope, that's freaking wrong. So we're gonna turn left right over here for the song. I don't know where I am going. Seems a little spooky that they say hello to me right here. That did something. Okay. I 
don't know where I'm going around here. I don't know where I'm going around here. This factory sucks a lot of butts. I don't know where I'm going around here. Now this is open though. I'm guessing. No. 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 Hmm. So I'm guessing it's. Somewhere over here? Ah, yes. That's a creepy mask. Oh, that's cute. Why? Why? Stop. Just a cute little smiling face. Oh, look at you. Oh. The creepy mask is following me now. Okay, okay. Uh, so it's got to be up this way. I'm, I'm just assuming that it's up this way because this was a path that had a, a, a locked section. Ha-ha! Yeah, that's right. Are you... That's a red record for that. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What a fucked up dream. Son of a biscuit. Ah. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know. You know we love it. Cute. Cute. Yeah. So cute. Oh, that's just so cute. So cute, so cute. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Don't know what that did. Okay. Uh, wasn't there? Okay, there, there's got to be only one left, right? This has to be the last one over here. Yay! Um, well, well, guys. If we get sacrificed, yeah, it was a fun run. Uh, Alright, that's good. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh, uh.
Am I being sacrificed? Is that literally what just happened right now? Oh, yeah, cool. Cool. This guy's dreams are good. It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying in the there, in the darkest load, frightening the world with hot and change of the atmosphere, thickening the air as if something had misplaced it. So I heard the first casual twist of the bed sheets below. First, there was just an increase of my heartbeat of the realization that something was once again in the bottom bunk of that bed. A word which had been sent in exile and filtered up through my consciousness. The word was FUCK! Sorry. <laughs> Breaking free of all repression, gasping for air, screaming, etching, and carving its way into my mind. Just... G -g 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 Ghost! As this thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor had ceased moving. The bed sheets lay calm and dormant, but they had replaced by something far more hideous a slow, rhythmic, rasping breath heaved and escaped from the thing below. I can imagine its chest rising and falling with each sword wheezing a garbled breath. I shuddered and hoped beyond all hope that it would leave without occurrence. The house lay as it had the previous night in a thick blanket of darkness. Sounds prevailed all but for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen buckmate. I lay there terrified. I just wanted this thing to go, to leave my room. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling transpired. It moved. It moved in a way different from before. When it threw itself around in the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained without purpose, almost animalistic. For that thing lying there in the darkness, that, that thing which seemed intent on terrorizing a young, calmly and nonchalantly sat up. Its late breathing had become louder. Now, only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden slates separated my body from the unearthly breath below. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears of fear which mere words cannot relate to you or any else course through my veins. Or anyone else course through my veins. I would not believe this, that this fear could have been heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined what this thing would look like sitting there listening from below my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. Imagination then turned to an unnerving reality and began to touch the wooden slates which my mattress sat on. It seemed to caress them carefully, running what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of the wood. Then, with great force, it prodded angrily between two slates of the mattress. Even though the padding it felt as though someone had viciously stuck their fingers into my side. I let an almighty cry, the wheezing, shaking, and moving thing in the bunk below replied in kind, violently vibrated in the bunk as it had done the night before. Small flakes of plate powdered under my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed scraped along it backwards, forwards. <laughs> Once again, I was bathed in light, and there stood my mother, loving, caring as she always was comforting hug and calming words which eventually subdued my hysteria of course she asked what was wrong but I could not say I dared not I simply said one word over and over and over again nightmare 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 this pattern of events continued for weeks if not months Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time, I would scream so as to not provide the abomination with time to prod and feel me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force, torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to faint an illness a few times and come up with other less than other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place. A room where the light from outside did not sit right. Alone with that thing. With time, you become desensitized to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I come to realize that for whatever reason, this thing cannot harm me, for my mother was present. 
I'm sure the same would have been said for my father, but as loving as he was, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to nightmares. I don't like that. Is that oh shit. Is that a door right there? Oh, okay. So how are we doing with you guys today? Disgusting stuff inside those are heads! My dude, what are you dreaming? What are you watching throughout the day? What is this ghost doing? Uh, it's a, it's a big pool. That, that's a very big pool. My dude? He looks like him in half. Ah, okay. Uh, sounds like uh, somebody was having a bad time in the bathroom. Hey, Craig. Uh, what is that? I don't know. I don't know. What is happening in this church? You love to see it. Oh. Uh, great googly movie. Okay. Oh. Oh, why? 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 Okay. I guess. Oh. Alright. Oh, what in the... Why? Why? No, get away from the mic, buddy. Sorry about that, guys. Craven is investigating the mic. What is that? Craven. Get away from the mic, buddy. Oh, it's their mouths closing. Ah. Okay. Yep, that's cute. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Cool, cool. Yep, yep. Ah. Yes. Yep. Oh, cool, yeah. Oh, fuck it. Stop it. No more. Please? Porcelain dolls weird me out, man. Mm. Not a fun time. Whoa. Oh, boy. 
we're just gonna we're just gonna keep walking. Oh, we're. Mm -hmm. Crying, screaming babies. No, no, that's where I draw the line. No, no, not a good time. Yeah, cool. I love you. Oh, tiny little baby. It's okay. Mm -hmm. No, just, just take a nap. It, it'll help. Oh my god. Are those babies with old men heads? What the hell? No! <laughs> no! Why? Stop it! No! Oh, that's not okay. <clears throat> My greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short and the longer nights merely provided this wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerative illness robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights, and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother and felt nothing but anguish at her illness. To this day, I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her. But of what my nightly visitor may do should it become aware that of my mother's absence. Her presence being the one thing which I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched the bed sheets and mattress from the lower bunk. Removing all the slates and placing an old desk and chest of drawers and some chairs which kept we kept in a cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father I was making an office, which he found adorable. But I would be damned if I'd give that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak her in sneak into her jewelry box and take a small family crucifix which I had seen there before. While my family were not very religious at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand sleep eventually came and as I drifted off to dream I hoped that I would awaken in the morning of that incident. Unfortunately that night was the most terrifying of all. Urban Explorer. Let's go! Uh, Frankenstein monster? It says wolf. Okay. Closer for play. That is a piano. Well done. Watch school books. Okay. The feeling that something is invading your privacy with, even without ill will is still disturbing. Oh. No. Don't like that. Or that. You are good. You are good. Clock has stopped. Cool. Let's see. Three bucks.
see it. Even if you don't know why they are here, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. Oh, that's a triceratops. But... Hi? Here's a triceratops. An old picture of what seems to be a religious man and woman. Stack of comic books. Is that a bathtub in the middle of class? It is. The sounds of screams are awful. They are even worse when they are your own. Nope, you know, we're just gonna cut you off right there. Dirty, worn out mattress. Uh, let's see. Fuck, Draven. You just scared the shit out of me. My cat just came up and, like, booped my fucking knee. Rude. desk big filing cabinet big filing cabinet various books hard to read various material Door's broken. Cool. Stop looking at me, Swan. School rules. Hmm, nice. On the wall, various roots. Cool. Oh, why am I in a... Busted. Cool. Ah. <laughs> Love being in a cellar. Hmm. That's cool. Love the floor. Are you a cow? I don't know if I want to be that way yet. I'm so afraid I can see. I don't know. Okay. 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 
Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, it's disgusting. I hate it. I don't like the screams. Mm -hmm. Oh, you love it. Oh, we. It's a great time. You know, just keep walking. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, 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 swim. swim. What is happening? Are we sacri sacrificing the child? No. I'm going to be a sacrifice. I'm going to be a sacrifice. I'm going to be a sacrifice. Oh, all right. That's cute. Ah, yes. Ah, beautiful. Um, Nani? You're awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. All right, then. All right. Uh, I woke gradually. The room was once again dark. My eyes adjusted. I could gradually make out the window, the door, and the walls, some toys on a shelf, and even to this day, I shudder to think of it. There was no noise, no rustling of sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless, lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, hate-filled thing which had terrorized me night after night, was not on the bottom bunk. It was in my bed. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I cannot scream, I do not want to let it know I was awake. I had not seen it. I can only feel it. It was obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline and I could feel its presence. I dared not look. The weight of it pressed down on top of me, a sensation I will never forget. When I say that hours passed, I do not exaggerate. Laying there motionless in the darkness, I was every bit of scared and frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months it would have been light by then but the grasp of winter is long and unrelenting and i knew it would be hours before sunrise a sunrise which i yearned for i was a stupid child by nature but i reached a breaking point a moment where i could wait no more where i would survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer fear can sometimes wear you out make you threadbare a shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace of you behind i had to get out of my bed then i remembered the crucifix my hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist to find it, minimizing as best as I could the sound and vibrations caused, but it could not be found. I had either knocked it off the top bunk, or it had. I could not even bear to think of it been t taken out of my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost any sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened, frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there dormant passive doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leave from the bed in the hope that I make it to the door? What if it's faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of the top bunk, helping not to d disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that it had not yet stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. Here it is. Cute. Let's go, guys. Ah, cool. Cool. We're we're underwater. Are we a fish? Oh, we 
thought I was a fish for a second. Um, okay. Um, why? Okay. This way. Ah, you know what? We're just gonna just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming. Oh. Cool. Ah, what are you? Okay. Is that a body? That's my dad! What the hell? Yeah, yes. Okay, cool. Um, uh, what the hell is my dad doing here? Uh, hello? Yes. One of my brightest fears is deep water. Oh, cool. Very dark. Very dark. Very dark. Very dark. Ah, cool. Fear of suffocating. Fear of the unknown. Um, hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Papa, Father, What is that? Is that the alien? Is that an egg that I'm falling into? Is it a sarlacc? It's a sarlacc. No. What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much breathed since I had woken up. Perhaps I was resting, believing that it had finally got me, that I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps I was toying with me. After all, it had been doing just that for the countless nights. Now with me under it, pinned against my mattress with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off, savoring its victory until the last moment possible, like a wild animal savoring its prey. tried to breathe as shallowly as possible, mustering every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off me. What I found under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold. Something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror. As I was sure must now have known that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to disproportionately larger bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest, with the hand resting on my left shoulder as it grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I was even so much hope to escape its grasp. 
For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled my stomach and my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of the strangled, oily hair. I cannot bring myself to touch its face, although I wondered to this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. Hasta. Getting closer. Uh, nope, nope, okay. Alright, we're just gonna keep walking. Alright, we're just gonna turn. <laughs> Fuck. What the hell? This kid's got a fucked up imagination. Oh, some eyes. Cool. You know what? Oh, you know, it's cool. It's a great time. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death? Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Oh, cool. Cool. I, uh, I just want to be done. Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, cool. Uh, it's like Hellraiser a bit. crossroads in life what does one do stand at the crossroads if you will but if you will not choose I'll move on without you and having once chosen never to seek to return to the crossroads without decision for even if one chooses wrongly the choice cannot be unmade oh okay Okay. What? Is this like five nights? <laughs> oh. You know, we love it. Love to see it. Great time. Beautiful time, yeah? Can we, uh, can we leave? Can we get out of here, please? Is that Zool? It moved. It was subtle, but its grip on my shoulder and across my body strengthened. No tears came, but God, how I wanted to cry. As its hand and arm slowly coiled around me, my left leg brushed along the cool wall which, was, which the bed lay against. With all that happened to me in that room, this was the strangest. I realized that this clutching, rancid thing, which drew great delight from violating a young boy's bed, was not entirely on top of me. It was sticking out of, from the wall like a spider striking through its layers. Oh, suddenly its grip moved from a slow tightling to a sudden squeeze. 
It pulled and clawed at my clothes as if it frightened that the opportunity would soon pass. I fought against it, but it's a emaciated arm, emaciated, emaciated arm, Jesus. Oh, it was too strong for me. Its head rose up, writhing and comforting under the blanket. I now realized where it was taking me, into the wall. I fought for dear life. It cried suddenly, and my voice returned on me, yelling, screaming, but no one came. Then I realized why I was so eager to suddenly strike. Well, this thing had to have me now, through my window. That window which seemed to represent so much malice from the outside. I streaked hope. The first rays of sunshine I struggled further, knowing that I could just hold on. It would soon be gone. As I fought for my life, the unearthly parasite shifted, slowly pulling itself up my chest. My head now poking up, out from, its head now poking out from under the blanket, wheezing, coughing, rasping. I do not remember its features. I simply remember its breath against my face, pallid and cold as ice. As the sun broke from the horizon, that dark place, that suffocating room of contempt was washed, bathed in sunlight. I, <laughs> excuse me, I passed out as its scrawny fingers encircled my neck, squeezing the very life from me. I awoke to my father offering to make me some breakfast. A wonderful sight indeed. I had survived the most horrible experience of my life until then and now. I moved the bed away from the wall, leaving behind the furniture I had believed would stop that thing from taking a bed. Little did I think that I would try to take mine and me. Weeks passed without incident, yet on one cold one on one cold frostbitten night, I awoke to the sound of the furniture where the bunk beds used to be vibrating violently. I lay there, sure I could hear a distant wheezing coming from deep within the wall, finally fading into the distance. The following year, I was given a larger room on the other side of the house, and my parents took that room as their bedroom. They said they didn't need a large room, just one big enough for a bed and a few things. They lasted ten days. We moved on the 11th. Oh, shit. It moves. Oh man, is that it? Oh hell yeah, dude. Oh man, that was so fun. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, this is a blast. I'm I hope you guys are enjoying this because I'm loving going through all these horror games and spooky, creepy games and Yes, I am a pansy. I am the biggest pansy when it comes to horror games. Like, really anything scares me. I, I just get immersed into the game, and I, it sucks me in, and just boom. This was fun. This was this was a really fun game. It is free on Steam if you guys want to check it out. Um, man, that was ah. And all right, guys. Well, oh wait, yep. Looks like that is it, everyone. Well, uh, I will see you guys on the next episode. Uh, we're just gonna get a little spookier as we go on, I guess. Well, anyway, guys, I love you. Stay spooky, and I hope you guys have a great day. Much love. Ba 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 ka.